Take a look at the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton top pole position around the streets of Monaco, fueling the hope within the Mercedes team that the consistency will be very much improved for the rest of the season. Sebastian Vettel places his Ferrari alongside the Brit, fueling the hope within the Ferrari team that they can improve on their race results from here on out. Dan Ricciardo sits just behind pole position in third, and with an absence of both Williams ever since Bahrain, places a spotlight on the two rookies of NASA in science who line up in fourth and fifth. A poor qualifying from Rosberg finds himself in an awkward sixth place alongside Jensen Button. Sergio Perez, Nico Hülkenberg and Max Verstappen round out the top ten for the Monaco Grand Prix. What's going on guys, Arab here and welcome back to my F1 Ultra Mod Karima. We're back with the jewel of the F1 calendar, the Monaco Grand Prix for episode number 6 here on a Monday night. Thank you guys so much so far, I must say, also for the support on these episodes. Week in, week out, you guys absolutely smashed the support on the likes and the comments and whatnot. Really awesome to just read through them and it just keeps me going to keep on making this series as awesome as possible. And I uh, definitely hope that I can keep on doing that for you guys. So here at Monaco, obviously quite a high, high downfall circuit. So our setup requires quite a lot of wing here, 1110 in fact, so quite a lot. And as you can see in the background there on the car, we've got quite a lot of new sponsors here for the Monaco Grand Prix. Obviously Monaco, quite a prestigious place and it brings a lot of sponsorship, especially just for Monaco. So we've got the likes of Smirnoff uh, Vodka sponsoring us. We've got Jägmeister, we've got Ray-Ban. We've got some awesome, awesome sponsors sponsoring the Ferrari car just for this weekend at Monaco. So the car is looking pretty damn swag if I do say so myself. But here looking at the strategy, option prime option. But that may not be a factor so much because as you can see on the monitor there as well We've got a chance of rain as you can see it's also overcast So the rain will come into effect eventually I'm guessing so we may not actually have to run both compounds of tires We will see but let's go to the Monaco Grand Prix and see who comes out of top in the principality Right, here we are for round six, the one, the Monaco Grand Prix, the one every driver wants to try and win once in their career. There is Sebastian Vettel, my teammate, in second place. We go to five red lights and we are off. There we are in the background, P20. What can we do from there today? Alonso there, looked like he got quite a good start. We barrel towards turn one. Stevens taking it very cautiously. We got up into 19th place. Obviously, realistic damage as ever in this career mode. So we're going to have to take it very cautiously, but we get up to 18th. We need to be aggressive, but cautious at the same time. Sort of contradictory, but we need to kind of do the best we can with that. And Bottas going very slowly. Both with Williams really having poor pace in qualifying as now we get hung, uh, we kind of get hung behind Alonso there on the prime tires going very cautiously he had a really good start into turn one but then going very very cautiously here we just banged tires with him a little bit we managed to get up to 17th and now locking up a little bit we managed to go down the inside of Valtteri Bottas side by side lovely swooping angle there on the camera and we managed to get past Valtteri Bottas so Bottas really struggling here uh, for grip at Monaco and the same with Massa who's down the order so I can't I do not know what's happened with Williams I'm guessing their low drag setup really doesn't work well here at Monaco but we're up into 16th place and we're making good progress now can we get on the back of Marcus Ericsson later on in the Grand Prix onto lap two now through Casino really now getting to the groove and rhythm of Monaco as they say dialing into the circuit as we're right up against the Sauber of Marcus Ericsson can we make a similar move that we did to Bottas yes we can down the inside of that hairpin once more looks like Bottas there you can see in the background also trying a similar move but it didn't quite work out the same as mine but we're up into 15th place so I did Identical move there to Bottas, so that looks like that may be our overtaking spot this race, as the AI go a little bit slow into there, and I'm really good on the brakes. So now, onto the end of lap two, right behind Pastor Maldonado, he goes very slowly, I see an opportunity, we pounce side by side through the last corner, didn't quite make the move work, we actually lose some speed, and Ericsson's now coming back at us with a bit of a broken front wing there, he comes back at us side by side through turn one, I lock up a little bit, but we managed to keep the place into turn one, but we tried to make that move side by side in the last corner, just didn't work out for us, but hey-ho, you know, you've got to give us some uh, brownie points for trying to trying to make the move. That would have been a very, very tasty one if we did make it work, but oh well. Now 
onto lap four. We're going to try it again on Maldonado. This time into the first sector, into the second sector indeed of Monaco through Casino Square. You can see we're right on the back of his gearbox, right up his chuff. Can we make a move down the inside? We dive it down and we completely cleared him. What a breaking zone that was for us. And we've cleared him completely. So we're right on the back of Danica Fiat now in the Red Bull. But what a move and pass to Maldonado. A little bit of a lock up. Looks like we're locking up quite a bit here in Monaco. So we might need to move the brake bias rear. But right now we're really, really on it. I felt so in the zone. And I, I must say, when you're really on it, you're concentrating on trying to overtake people. Monaco is just the best place. And now look at it. We nearly went side by side and tried to overtake a Fiat down to that braking zone. Didn't quite work out. He kept it side by side with us. And we nearly made that move. But he's defended quite well so we'll go again maybe through the swing pool section can we make a move down the inside just about first gear action side by side round the outside and we've made the move stick up to p12 and it just feels so so damn good monaco as i was saying before i was interrupted by my own overtake on kafia Monaco, when you're dialed in and just trying to overtake people, it is just the best circuit in the world. We try to have a look at Massa here a little bit into the breaking zone. Think better of it. Can we make a move down the hairpin? We try it again. Is it going to work? Yes, it is. And again, we make a lovely another move for 11th place. And it's only been seven laps gone in the Grand Prix. We want this victory. I talked about last race that we haven't won a race yet this season. You guys said in the comments below of the last race that I th that you guys thought I could do it here at Monaco. I also believed it. And I'm really, really Really believing it. We're gunning through the grid. Surely it is our destiny. We're coming through on lap bay in Rich Mix. Now down to standard to save a bit of the engine. You can see it's heating up and we're on the back of points already in the in the form of Max Verstappen. Can we get him? We really make a turn. Oh my word. Audacious move down the inside. I even forgot we made that move and we're up into 10th place. Wow, what stuff this is here at Monaco. We're up to P10 already. Lap bay and the moves we've been making Oh ho ho, voila, wow, just great stuff to watch back, uh, just, I'm, I'm having fun watching the race back, I mean, I raced the bloody race myself, but just watching it back is amazing, and now we're on the back of Sergio Perez, he gets a bad run through that corner, can we squeeze it through, down the inside of Raskas, yes we have, and we're up to P9 now of the Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel, my teammate, is currently leading the Grand Prix, he sets a purple lap time, is this the time for Ferrari, is this the time for Forza Ferrari, he's in P1 at the moment, banging in the purple lap times and I'm in P9 just making moves left, right and centre. I really do think it is. I think it is Ferrari's time. I really do think so. But right now, as you can see, it is still overcast. So... We're going to have to watch out for that. It may start to rain anytime soon, so we're going to have to watch out for that. But now, right on the back of the Hulkenberg, hustling and harrying him on his gearbox. We make the move down the inside. That was a bit of a less of a kind of dive move. We just kind of kind of naturally kind of got right past him there as he was going quite slowly. And then looky, looky here, actually. Who is this? Nico Rosberg in seventh place. My championship rival. I mean, I've got a few rivals in the championship right now, but you must say he's the closest one there. But he is right ahead of me in 7th place. But now we can't to lap 10. As you can see, a safety car has been deployed. We're up into P7. So I think someone must have had a crash somewhere. And they kind of, you know, their car got retired. So we just went past them for 7th place without actually seeing them on track. So the safety car is out right now. But let's get back to Rosberg. Right ahead of me. Now in qualifying, he had a really poor showing in qualifying. Obviously, Hamilton got pole. He was down the order. And looks like his race pace really hasn't been that great. So this could be a great start on the restart or in the coming laps try and overtake him and really get a nice lead in the championship that would be absolutely amazing to do but saying that on the restart there Rosberg really gets off the last turn amazingly so we haven't had actually quite a good restart there but we're still in seventh place thankfully behind us no kind of qualms with Hulkenberg there and Vettel thankfully still in first place and now into lap 16 still banging in the purple lap times it's taken us a few laps to catch back to Rosberg and try and catch back up to this train which is of him and another car I think that's a Red Bull I can't quite see uh, properly on my monitor. But now we're closing up on Rosberg. Can we make a move? Obviously, it's going to be a little bit harder. He's going to defend quite well from us. But he's go side by side. And as I said, he's going to defend quite well from us. Because look at that. He just chops me off there. Gives me no room. And another safety car has been called out. So we tried to make the move. We're going to maybe have another go through the tunnel maybe. But no, the safety car has, uh, has stopped that. So a second safety car in the span of about six laps there. So crazy stuff here at Monaco. It is all going off. But as I said, yeah. Rosberg being in the Mercedes, he was never going to make it easy for us. And he really chopped us off there to try and make that move on the right-hander. But now you can see, on lap 16 towards the end of it, we've gone into the pits now for a set of prime tyres, the yellow wall tyres. 
I've gone a little bit early, but that's because we've got a safety car. So essentially, like they say in the real life uh, Grand Prix, you kind of gain a free pit stop almost because you're pitting under the safety car. So you're not losing so much time because the entire field, including you, has to bunch up anyway. So... I think this is going to be sort of worth it in the long haul because we can save a lot of tire tire wear by having the safety car period on these prime tires, so we're not doing ourselves any harm there. And also, eventually, the grid is going to the entire grid has to pit soon. None of them are pit yet on lap 18 when we're resuming the action from this safety car, so none of them are pit yet, and we're very bunched up. So we're going to gain a whole lot of places here, and hopefully, the the hope is that we net, get a net gain and we go further than P7. So right through the restart, we go a very shocking restart actually through the last turn there, nearly hit the wall, but I'm not complaining too much, at least we didn't break any of our front wing, but now, on the back of Rossi, P19, pretty damn easy move, as you must say, the Mana car, never going to put up too much of a fight, we're up to 14th place, and now the next car up is Fernando Alonso in that McLaren, who's just going about his business, obviously, he started on the prime tyres, so I'm going to tip him to do quite well in this Grand Prix, actually, because if people keep on retiring like they are now, and having crashes with the safety car, Alonso, just going about his business on the prime tyres, could come through, potentially, but we're up to P13 now, very good progress on the prime tyres. The prime tyres obviously not as good grip as the options but they don't feel too bad. You can see the rear is coming out a little bit so that is a little bit of an issue. Onto lap 20 though. Hulkenberg just completely getting out of my way. He looks like he retired just then momentarily just spontaneously retired so that was a little bit weird but I take the position anyway. Vettel bangs in another purple sector so Vettel so on it today, so on it, and was that actually a spit of rain there, actually I see in the middle of the screen, I think it might start to be starting to rain here, so we might have to watch out for that, but yeah, Vettel, really good job for him, really happy that Sebastian is up there in first place, hopefully I can join him and try and fight him, and oh my god, another safety car, are you kidding me, a third safety car, oh, just absolute madness, and it's all been within a period of like what? 14 laps there's been three safety cars I don't know what what on earth is going on with the AI what on earth what scrapping they're going on but they're in the wars today at Monaco and that's the third safety car in a period of about 12 laps so that's absolutely awesome and pretty crazy to see and that's going to work to our advantage because look at this most of the cars are going to the pits now I've already made my pit stop so look at this look at all the positions we're going to gain P10 P9 P8 P7 maybe yes it is P6 as well Look at that. We have gained so much time. And we've got a net gain up to P6. And look how, who's in front of us. Lewis Hamilton has come out in front of us. He's made his pit stop now. Now, Lewis was second place before all the safety cars came out and anyone made the pit stop. So does that mean we're in a net third place? By lap 22, our answer is yes. P3, Hamilton right there in second place. There is our man, Sebastian Vettel, our teammate, in first place. Look at the strategy there. I I don't want to I don't want to blow my, my blow my own trumpet, but that is just that is simply awesome strategy there. The team have got that completely correct. We discussed it with the team during the race, and we thought we'd pit early, and that has worked out an absolute treat for us. So now through the final corner, another restart, another shocking restart because we nearly hit the pit, we nearly hit the wall there on the left hand side. And now Ricardo here, he's looking down our left hand side. Will he make a move around the outside to turn one? He's going to give it a good go, double lock up. We go side by side through turn one. We just have the balls to stick it through and keep third place there. But Ricardo, he really kept it in there really broke late compared to me actually I had to double lock up to try and regain the place but we're back up into third place no DRS actually at the moment my DRS is offline so that's hopefully something the team will fix soon because we are going to hopefully get on the back of Hamilton eventually but on to lap 28 now you can see it's very much still overcast and I think the rain is starting to come down now I mean I think it was around 45% chance of rain so you would say looking at the calculations the rain should be coming down right about now and I think I do see a few spits around don't, I don't know if you can spot that also on your monitors, guys, but I think the rain is starting to come down. So this is going to be interesting because I haven't actually been able to catch Hamilton at all that much. I mean, they've been keeping the gap, but I really haven't gotten right up there. And you can see Ricardo is right behind me still. Look, in the mirrors, in the left mirror, he's right there, proximity, proximity arrow and everything. So I haven't been able to leave Ricardo for dust like the other cars. So the pace hasn't been amazing on the prime tyres. So hopefully the rain that you're seeing right now on lap 31 is going to help that because we're closing up on Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. You can see are struggling. I'm struggling as well. We're skating through that next corner. Corner. Everyone's struggling in these conditions as it's pretty much de definitely time for intermediate tyres. But we're right behind Hamilton. Look at that. The grip levels are really poor. But we're just managing to manage 
that kind of grip level a little bit better than Hamilton at the moment. We managed to kind of drift through almost and skate through the corners. I don't know, maybe Force is helping me with that a little bit to kind of drift through some of these corners and keep up with Hamilton. We get so close, we actually tap Hamilton there on the gearbox a little bit on lap 31. You can see the rear just wants to squirrel away. It is definitely time for intermediate tyres, so we're all going to have to come in. So unfortunately... I'm foreseeing that we're probably going to get held up by my team at uh, Vettel because he's not pit yet. So we're probably all to... Oh, God. We've also lost a little bit of our front wing there on the right on the left-hander. So definitely time to pit. As you can see, the track is completely damp. And so we're coming to the pits now. And Vettel will come in. Yep, Vettel will come in. So we're going to get held up, unfortunately. So how much is this going to be? Ricardo in as well. Let's see. Oh, dear. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Oh, no. We're still not in. Now we're in. Oh, God, that was... Oh, we've got to change our front wing as well. Oh, my God, this is... Oh, God, Ricardo's passed. Look at how much time we've lost there. Wow. We're down to... Oh, dear Lord. We're down to P10. We're going to make some places up, obviously, as these guys come back. But will this be P4? Uh, yeah, P4. P4, okay, so that's a uh, disaster inverted. I thought for a second we were going to go down to P10. But P4, we've lost the place to Ricardo, unfortunately. So... Uh, we couldn't really do too much apart from, you must say, maybe pitting the lap before. But I couldn't foresee the rain coming down that fast, unfortunately. So lap 32, we're in P4. It's Vettel from Hamilton, from Ricardo, from myself. So this is going to get very, very interesting now. Lap 33 on the intermediates. Everyone is struggling. Look at this. Alonso. No, not Alonso. Sainz, I'm sorry. Sainz getting held up here by Hamilton. Hamilton is down to P3. Has he lost his front wing, I wonder? It's getting very, very wet here at Monaco. It's almost time for the wet tyres. But Hamilton there without a front wing. He comes into the pits now. So he's lost his front wing. So it's now Vettel from Ricardo, from myself. We're into P3 now. And Sainz getting held up there. And then speaking of Alonso, I mixed up Sainz and Alonso. Alonso is now into P4. So I absolutely nailed the calling. I called it. I said Alonso could have just made a good race by just going about his business. And he's up into P4 now. What awesome stuff that is for him. But on, to lap, on lap 34, you can see the rain is chucking it down. It is definitely going to be time for the wet tyres eventually. I mean, look at the grip levels just now. Just kind of struggling with intermediates. As, uh, not as much as I should, should do if it was intermediate conditions. So I definitely think it's time for the blue wall tyres eventually. Uh, I don't know if Hamilton's going to be smart enough to maybe go onto the wet tyres straight away with that front wing change. But, yeah, we didn't see it. We couldn't see a replay of that, unfortunately, on this game. But Hamilton, I think he must have had a crash with maybe Ricardo, Or maybe he just hit a bollard or just a wall. But now on lap 35, we just gingerly make our way back to the pits. We just about scraped through there. Raskas, we nearly hit the wall. But now we're into the pits. Thankfully, our teammates are gonna help, not going to hold this up too much. So here are those blue, blue wall tyres. Alonso there goes through, and he's in fourth place. And then we got a Lotus. I think that's Grosjean, I want to say. So we're up to P3 once more. Ricardo second, Vettel first. Now, the question is, can we catch Ricardo? Because I've do uh, Vettel's pace has been so blisteringly fast. I honestly think we might have lost the shot of a win just because of uh, all those safety cars. Even though they might have helped us a little bit, the rain has not helped and our pace has not been amazing compared to Vettel's. But compared to Ricardo's, it's been very good. And we cut all the way onto lap 40 now, quite a few laps later. And we're slowly closing Ricardo. You can see his red rain light there. We're closing up on him. And also, oh my God, Rosberg. Well, mate, <laughs> this is uh, very embarrassing for, for you, Nico. Um, my championship rival, um, yeah, blue flags, please. Blue flag, move, move, move away, mate. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, dear Lord, that must be embarrassing for him. Nico Rosberg has to let me through under blue flags. Oh, dearie me. Well, we've caught up to Ricardo now onto the end of lap 40. I said the pace was pretty good compared to Ricardo. So hopefully we'll be able to overtake him and we can get into second place. Look at the spray here. I can hardly see him. And the braking zone is just so hard to kind of look at that we're just really struggling to actually keep up with him in some of the corners. Hopefully we can overtake him soon and get out this dirty air and all the turbulent water air that is being chucked up by this Formula 1 car. Obviously, Formula 1 cars probably the best in the world at chucking up water from a road. But now we're right behind Ricardo, right up his gearbox. Surely we're going to have to make the move very, very soon. I'm getting a little bit impatient here as we're having to squirrel around in his dirty air. Look how slow he's going. We're going to have to make the move. Now, nah, fuck it. We're going to have to make the move down the inside on Ricardo, up to second place. We had to make that move. I was getting so impatient there on Ricardo. And now we've gone to lap 57. And as you can see, 
The gap is humongous compared to Vettel. Just my teammate. I don't know what Vettel's been on today, but he has been absolutely stonking the pace. And we're into the pits now, lap 57. As you can see, hopefully, by the weather around us, it is a lot less, uh, you know, uh, a lot less rain around the circuit. So it's time for the intermediate tyres once more. So we're sort of going back down. Looks like it was just kind of a, a shower that came through Monaco and then passed. So Vettel, 25 seconds or so ahead of us. So that probably isn't going to be cool. I'm going to be honest. Even I don't have that sort of pace to close down 25 seconds. So, you know, we've got 20 laps to go. I don't think we're going to do it. And on to lap 63, indeed, Vettel has still got that gap pretty much. But as you can see now, it's all nice and sunny here at Monaco. And it's time for the dry tyres, actually. So a very extreme change of weather here at Monaco. And it's all nice and sunny now. It's going to dry up and hopefully we can get some just good pace and come home in a good second place. We come into the pits now for a set of red wall super soft tyres. But... Even though I sound a little bit I sound a little bit down, I know, because we haven't got Vettel, and I would have loved to have won the Monaco Grand Prix and get the first win of the season because it is very odd for me not to get a win yet by the sixth episode of a season. It's very, very odd, especially in like a car like the Ferrari, but it just hasn't been for us. I mean, we've been very consistent, but we just haven't got that extra pace to get first place. But saying that, coming through on lap 78, we're in second place. Sebastian Vettel has won the Grand Prix and we're going to make it a 1-2 for Ferrari. It's Sebastian's first win. It's Ferrari's first 1-2 of this season. We said it. We said we were going to improve our race pace in the European season. We've done just that. And that is a 1-2 for Ferrari. Hashtag Forza Ferrari. Get in there. 1-2. I'm, I'm so happy with, with that. I am really, really, really am. Not lying to you one bit. I really am very, very happy that Sebastian has managed to come through with the win today. And I've got second place to back that up. And we got a 1-2. Awesome stuff. You know, we, last season in Season 2 of Ultramod, we did the same thing in Red Bull. Me and Sebastian were quite a tag team. We were doing quite well to try and combat the Mercedes. This year, in a different team, we just haven't gelled and we haven't got that race pace together, both of us really. But today, we have done it in the streets of Monaco and that's absolutely awesome. 1-2, Rosberg down the order, Hamilton down the order. Absolutely perfect weekend for Ferrari there in terms of the championship. And for me, for the drivers, as you can see with Rosberg's poor performance, we are now quite some way ahead in the championship. We got a really nice comfortable gap, 96 points, Rosberg with 84. Then Sebastian Vettel in third place jumps up with 71 points down total. Felipe Massa and Bottas, the two Williams, fourth and fifth. And then Hamilton, sixth place with 48 points. But to be honest, I still think Hamilton is in the championship. And I think the top six are all within a shout. You know, it's been such a up and down season to be honest I've been the only consistent one everyone else has had such up and down races that you know at some point hope you know at some point for their sake I think my consistency somehow has to end for them but it's been such a fantastic season so far so maniac in terms of the results and whatnot and we've got Scuderia Ferrari there P1 in constructors what a one two for us today and that puts us P1 in the championship. That is awesome to see. But guys, if you have enjoyed the episode, smash that like button, guys. It'd be absolutely awesome. We could try and get one and a half thousand likes on this episode once more. Come below when you thought. Awesome to read your comments every single time on these episodes, guys. If you're new around here, then do subscribe for weekly most more content. I've been Araba. Come join us today, and I will see you guys next time.